Welcome back to my channel guys, long time to see, I apologize for uh, not posting a lot of videos recently because I was really tied up with preparing all the job application interviews and subsequent studying for um, the algorithms. So today what we're going to take a look at is the how to figure out the combination uh, in Java. As you might have heard of uh, the combination or permutation terms in discrete math or mathematics class in high school, um, sort of this is sort of the program that we're going to do and I'm going to try to explain to you as brief and as, as accurate as possible so please tune in my channel and see what you can get. So the first thing is Find the combination result of the given string array given that the length of an output should be n. So if the given string array is a, b, and c, and d, actually these are all characters, but I just put it as string. Uh, if n is 2, so for combination 2 is a, b, b, c, c, d, it should be a 6, right? Which is 4 times 3 divided by 2. And if it's n, is, we're going to choose 3 of them. So order doesn't matter in combination, right? So uh, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 4C3, that should be a 3, so I do have, I'm sorry, it should be a 4, right? So how do we do it in Java? So the algorithm that we're going to today are going to use is basically a binary notation because it's either choosing or not choosing, right? It's choosing or not choosing, choosing or not choosing, choosing or not choosing. So as you see, the total, um, the how can I say, the possibilities would be 2 to the n, where n is the length of an array and we're going to somehow convert that notation to binary and then hey if binary is you know as you see it's a one and zero so if zero on x in this notation what i'm explaining if uh we count the number of ones there and one means we count um those characters inside of our string array so we're going to like put a uh, explain uh, i'm going to explain to how you uh you kind of develop your algorithm or something like that so first of all let's start by importing some library here as you see uh, these two elaborate really important libraries uh, kind of keep seeing and then what you do is definitely you start with a construction class here I'm gonna define a public or private method. Doesn't matter. Uh, private means you, that usually method stays inside of this class, so the um, people or access or modify whatever outside of, of this class cannot get access to this. A so private static. I'm gonna make it return the list of strings combination, and this combination method takes two parameters. The first is okay, the string array. The second is Int of length. So how many? Uh, how long? How long um, we need to choose, right? I mean, how many values in choice and length doesn't matter. How many values that you want to like kind of bring it out as a group so that we can satisfy the conditions of um, the con con combination. So um, let's instantiate my string array to uh, kind of store them into result later on. It's going to be returned after we append some value in it. Array right, list string. That's how you do it. So I'm gonna uh, instantiate a result list, and then later I'm gonna <coughs> populate it. And I'm gonna basically return it. In. Next thing I want to do is I just want to calculate the length of this array as a whole. So in this case, uh, the int n equals array dot length. So in this case, it's gonna be four. So what I want to define as large n is I'm going to calculate the power of 2 to the n, but in Java, this will return double, so I want to convert the data type into integer back, and this n, so in our case, in this case, n is 4, right? Because there are 4 uh, arrays in here, and this value will be 2 to the 4, in this case, so it will be 16, because that's the reason why I define these two values, I'll explain later, but this is very important when you uh, set the boundary of your iteration of your loop. And later on, what you want to do is you're going to start a looping to how many times? Large n, right? Because that covers the whole the cases of uh, making binaries. So we're going to, now we're going to jump into kick, uh, start binary notation. So I++. plus plus. So what you want to do is basically, you can say string code or screen tamp equals whatever. It's integer dot to binary. This is a very in, uh, important and useful method in Java, to binary string. And I'm going to explain you why this is second n bar i dot substring 1. So why do I make this line? Okay, and what this line returns? So here's the thing. So if 
n is a 3 and this n is going to be 8. If we want to print out the results, we're going to get as following. So the current value of n is 8, as you see. And I want to print out the string code 10123, one, depending on, you can take a look at the syntax here. It's n bar something, right? So given that n is 8, integer dot two, the binary of 8 is 100, zero, zero, as you see. But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so n bar 0 is 0, 0, 0. But actually, the 8 in binary notation is 1, 0, 0, 0. So as you see, the, all the first letter here it basically goes to or the uh, how big is the number n is. <coughs> Excuse me. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are whatever the notation of these three. This is a very powerful, um, basically, the Java syntax. So what, I'm, what I mean by that is if I say, uh, if you want to print out string x equals so what I first thought was hey what is the binary notation of number I'll say six I mean one two four uh, seven what I'm expecting is one 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 so if I want to print out hey what is string x I want to take a look at what's in string x and it should should be a one 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 as you hear but the reason why I want to use this later is I want to only get like these three of them. And if I say, hey, I want to show you why I do this. If I were to say, hey, it's string y equals integer to binary string of, hmm, let me think about this. What about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? How about eight? I want a system that I'll print y. And what is eight notation, right? In binary. That's all. I think that should be one zero to see these two letters are only one difference in decimal but as you see the number of um, the character I mean the number of digits in binary are different so we want to sort of set the upper bound by using the large n which is sort of the largest one so that we can take care of the rest of them so this is why I use dot substring one because once you do substring one in Java is you want to take care of all the strings from index position one to the end of uh, to the end of its end of this uh, string. So this is sort of a powerful method in Java. So I'm gonna comment these two out, and then I'm gonna comment these two out, and then I'm ex what I'm expecting is they definitely the last three digits. So that I'm gonna sort of to chop off the first letter of this one. See, this is perfect. This is what we want. And see, we want to count the number of one so that we can return the number of combinations after that. So going back to our code, what I want to do after figure out the code here is the code is all whatever the real like same number of digits that we're in form. Now we want to loop through each instance and count the number of ones. So we need another for loop, unfortunately. So this is not optimal code, but this is how you do it. Uh, zero j is smaller than n, not large n, because we only want to iterate. Um, I guess how, how do I say? It? I only want to iterate the length of this. In this case, uh, four. You know, so it's gonna be zero 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 one 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 zero zero one 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 stuff like that, and then we want increments a. And inside of this loop, what I want to do basically is if this code is is code dot char at basically right? If the code dot char at if we're taking we're still thinking about okay, so this code in this case would be like one uh, zero one uh, zero zero one one. How about that? If this is char at uh, I would say j is equal equal as one. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to. Uh, so first of the thing is I want to store not individual value but hold the value right? so we need accumulator variable so I'm gonna say string b equals doesn't matter I'm mean, this is not a good name but you know now I want to increment this b plus equal um, arr sub of j position because our ar is our original so this position should match with whatever the index of this code so if this is position two or three I want to 
add him and stick him up into a B. And after I finish this loop, I want to add him to the so with original result position. So also I want to finish off the counting all the adding all the uh, characters that are related that that belong to here. So I also want to define a counter equals zero, and I'm going to keep increment a counter no matter what. So if it's one, I want to say counter plus plus. So if I find hey it's a one, I'm gonna increment counter, right? And if after this for loop, right? After we finish out kind of checking one kind of instance of that, um, what I'm saying is if count is equal equal counter is equal equals length of it, it was original. What I want to do after that is I want to result dot add b. And after that, before we finish this um, kind of, sorry, I'm going to kind of put it down. Um, I want to return result. Okay. So let's try to print them out and see what we can get. Public static void main string args. And let's feed some string here, as we see here. That equals like a comma b comma c comma D and then we want to set lengths equals I want to just choose four so I the four combination two is six so I want it to be uh, printed out as six of them list string output equal combination dot ARR and I'm gonna pass these string and store them in an output and I'm gonna print them out by looping it does it make sense to you guys it should be very straightforward at this point we're almost at the end of it so for int i equals zero, i is more than output dot size. Because it's an output, it should be a size of it. Um, System dot out to print ln um, output dot get i. Okay. And now we want to execute and see what's what we're returning. Oops, I got some error here. Line forty. Do I miss some parentheses? Return results. Everything. Hmm, what's my problem? What did I miss today? So, call unexpected, call unexpected. So, that, that closes. Oops, I'm not closing the whole giant class here. Enum um, expected. So, what's going on here? What am I missing? That closes that. Uh, how many parentheses do I have? This closes. This closes that. We're about. Oh, that closes that, and then now we are closing this, this, and another big giant chunk closing this class. So you all the time, every time you need to be cautious about the parentheses. Um, identify expected combination dot. I'm sorry, I don't need a dot here. And line sixty-five. Why do I have line sixty-five? I don't have anything line sixty-five. Enum expected. Oops. Do I have something under beneath it? I hope I don't have any left there. That closes that solution. Still have this error, line uh, 63. Doesn't make any sense to me right now. Let me just quickly kind of temporarily cut it up and see what's in line. I don't see any though. That's interesting. How about I use a different Java Online compiler? Um, sorry, Java Online compiler. Uh, I think I'm getting there. I think I'm almost there. It's just a matter of certain configuration problem. Let me copy and paste it. Let's see if I can find some error here. Line 52, phenom expected. Oh, these two, I don't need this. That's why. 28, return statement. Line 28. Oh, I should put return here, not there. So that closes that. This closes this. How about we try nine now? C D B C Yep, how about we tried three?
Yep, perfect. How about we try four? We're expecting only one, which is ABCD. Boom, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.